Hello and welcome to the final episode of Google Cloud Tasks. So you know how to make a Firestore document TTL and you also know how to cancel the already scheduled task. But you left one thing that is the HTTP POST request we are sending on the scheduler callback to delete the document from our Firestore database is not secured at all. By saying that it's not secured, I simply means anyone with just internet connection and the pattern of my HTTP POST request can delete the POST from my Firestore database. So do you want to see the demo of the application? Let's have a look. So we have the simple application again. Let's go for creating one POST in here. Let's say schedule POST 1 to 3 and let's go for uploading this. So we got this POST in here. After refreshing the queue, we got this post schedule on 12, 12 and 44 seconds. So this will be deleted from the queue on that specified time. But let's go and send request on the scheduler call back HTTP post request to delete the post before its time is arrived to test it how this HTTP post request is not secured. So let's go and click this post and copy its post ID from here and open up your postman a simple api tester and paste the scheduler callback url in here your location will be in here and your project name and the scheduler callback trigger name and in the post id simply paste the post id in here and let's go for sending the post request on this and we got the post was successfully deleted which is the response of the scheduler callback the success response of the scheduler callback when the post is deleted from the Firestore database. So in the application, the post is deleted and here when we refresh this, there will still be the task remain in here and this task will be remain in here until its specified time is arrived and then it will be dispatched from here and it will look for deleting the post. But if there is no post, it will be simply dispatch and disappear from here and also can throw the entity not found error in the logs. So anyways, we have seen how our HTTP POST request is not secured. Anyone with just location and the project ID, the callback name and the POST ID can delete the document from our Firestore database as we have deleted right now for testing. So in today's episode, we are going to secure this HTTP POST request so no one outside will be allowed to delete the post from our cloud firestore database now when we refresh this queue its time is reached so there will be no task in the queue so you can see the task is not in here just because its specified time was arrived and it was dispatched from here so to overcome this issue we have to manage the schedule post ttl and the scheduler callback in a different way in order to attain such security for the HTTP POST request. First of all, we will authenticate our function invoker using the service account and then checking some specific conditions to allow only the authenticated request to delete the post from our Cloud Firestore database. So before going forward and creating the service account, let's understand the concept of service accounts in the Google Cloud Platform. In Google Cloud Platform, a service account is a special type of account which represents a non-human entity such as an application or a virtual machine instead of an individual user. And these accounts are mostly used to authenticate and authorize various resources in the Google Cloud Platform. So we will be using the service accounts in our schedule post TTL on create trigger to generate the open ID connect token or OIDC token whenever it's time for dispatch or send the request on the scheduler callback. So while sending the request on the scheduler callback, the open ID connect token generated with service account will be included in the authorization headers of the request. So later in the scheduler callback, we can grab that token from the authorization headers and verify that token. So if it was verified, we will allow the request for further processing to delete the post from the Firestore database. Otherwise, you will neglect the request and send the error message of 401 unauthorized token. So in that way, we will secure our HTTP POST request from outside world to not allow everyone with just internet connection to send the request on our HTTP POST request and delete the post from our cloud Firestore database.
So that was the scenario we are going to achieve in today's episode. So having this in mind, let's go for creating a service account. So to create a service account, simply you have to navigate to your Google Cloud Console and simply go for navigation menu where you will find the IAM and admin identity access management and admin. Open it in the new tab. After it's open, in the first tab, you will see all the default services accounts created of your project. Simply you have to ignore all of them. Each one service account is doing their own work. So we are going to create a service account that will be only used for to authenticate the function invoker so that only that service account will has the right to generate the open ID connect token and include it in the authorization header. So later we will be allowed to access it from the authorization header and verify that token. So to create a service account in the IAM and admin, simply you will form the service account tab. Click this to navigate here and you will find a button of create service account. Click this and go for creating a service account. You have to simply name your service account according to what task you are going to perform. So we are going to perform securing our HTTP POST request so we can simply name it secure my Google Cloud task or whatever you like. And also the service account will be generated directly when you simply name your service account and simply write a short description for your service account that for what you are creating a service account. So after this, the other two options are optional. So simply you can just go for next, next and create your service account. So after your service account is created, you have to come to again your IAM identity and access management first tab where you have found your service account. So simply, I have already created one. Secure my Google Cloud task and I have granted four roles to this account. So to grant roles to your service account, here you will find the grant access. Click this and in the new principle, type your service account and grant the role to it. But instead, if you have already created service account in here, you can go for edit and grant the roles in here, like add another role and go for in here, search for the role you want to give to your service account and go for saving it. So you have to give four roles to the service account you created. The first role will be the cloud functions invoker, the ability to invoke HTTP functions with restricted access, and also the cloud task admin with the cloud task in queue to enqueue the task in the queue. And finally, the service account token creator. That will be that token created and included in the authorization header of the request. So this role is for creating that open ID connect token and later to include it in the authorization headers. So in the scheduler callback, we will grab their token, verify that and allow the request for further processing. So after your service account is created, with these certain four roles, the cloud function invoker, cloud task admin, the cloud task enqueuer, and service account token creator. So you are ready to go and modify your scheduler callback and also the schedule post detail to secure our HTTP post request. So let's open up your VS code again, just like this and go to the schedule post detail. So in the schedule post detail, we have to add our service account in a constant variable. So let's go for adding it. So we got our service account email equals to the same secure my Google Cloud task and again the project ID iam.gserviceaccount.com the same service account that you have created and provided certain roles to it. Simply create this. So simply paste that account in a string and store it in a variable like service account email. And next thing you have to do is to configure your task. So in the HTTP request after the headers, we will do one more thing in here. That will be to include the OIDC token field also in here, it accept the map, we pass our service account and then the audience of the same service URL excluding the 
query params. The audience field in the OIDC authentication ensures that only intended recipient can accept and verify the token. And in our case, the intended recipient is our scheduler callback. So for more detail to know about the audience field, you can read my article on Medium, you will find the link in the video description. So after having this OIDC token included in your task, that was it for the modification of schedule post TTL in here. So you have to go for Ctrl S to save this file and let's go for modifying the scheduler callback. So before going forward and modifying the scheduler callback here, let's understand again that scenario. We have put our service account in the variable and pass it in here and also the audience field in here to ensure that that scheduler callback is our intended recipient and only scheduler callback can verify and accept the token. So whenever it's time for dispatch and send the request on the HTTP POST request only from our application side where we have added the service account and generating this OIDC token only that side will have the ability to include the token in the authorization header. So in the scheduler callback we will access this token and verify it and allow the request for further processing. So no one outside will be allowed to come in here because they don't have the token generated. So that way we are securing our HTTP POST request and you will also see after we write some code and deploy these functions and test them again. So after having this and schedule POST TTL, let's go for the scheduler callback and here after the POST ID, we need two more fields. That will be the project ID and the location because we are going to verify the tokens so we need the same audience that we have passed in here we need the same audience url so for that we also need the location and the project so in the scheduler callback we also have to pass the fields of project and location let's copy it from the schedule post tutorial and paste them in here so we are going to need them for the audience to verify the upcoming token from the request of schedule post TTL. So next thing in the schedule callback, we are going to do access the authorization header from the request and next print it in the console and surely you have to avoid console logs in your production application. I'm doing it just for testing it. So next check if authorization header was not null. If it was null, Simply, we will console the log unauthorized token and also send a response of unauthorized token. But in other case, if the authorization header has the token, so we will go for the verification process. So for verification, surely we have to access the token from the authorization header. So to access it, we will do access the token from the authorization header just like this and store it in the token variable and we are accessing the token from the authorization header by splitting it with a space and accessing it by one that is because the format of token in the authorization header is just like that next we will also again console log the token so after the token has been accessed from the authorization header let's go for verifying process so we will go through one more try catch and here we will await verify the token passing the token location and the project for the same audience and then console log token verified in other case unauthorized token console log and send the response of 401 unauthorized token return to end the function and do not allow the request for further processing to delete the post from our cloud file store database so now let's go for implementing this verify id token so outside this scheduler callback we will do Create an asynchronous function verify id token. It is accepting the token string location and the project of type any. And then we are accessing the OR2 client. So this will be accessed from the Google Auth library that I told you we are going to use in the final video of this series. So let's import also this just like that. So we got OR2 client from the Google Auth library and now the error is gone. Next from the OR2 client, we are verifying the audio token that is coming from the authorization header generated with the service account in the OIDC token field in the task configuration while dispatching and sending the request on the scheduler callback. 
So we are verifying that ID token, passing that ID token in here and the same audience in here. So we are saying we are the same audience that you meant for and we are the intended recipient to verify and accept the token. So here we are verifying the token by passing the same audience service URL that we have passed in the schedule post detail. So after this, whenever the token is verified, we are simply returning ticket dot get payload. Next in here, the error is gone from here. So what we are doing in here, accessing the post ID from the request for deleting the post from the cloud file store database. So we got the project location for the audience field. We got the authorization header from the request console log it if the authorization header was null simply we will say there is no token found so we will again send 401 error message that unauthorized token and then if it was not null so it means the token is here so simply we will exit it just like that and verify the token and console log the way token is verified go for deleting the post from the cloud file store database with the 200 success response the post was successfully deleted in other case unauthorized token 401 error message so that was it for also verifying the token in the scheduler callback trigger so in the schedule post detail whenever it's time for dispatch only from our application side it has the ability to include the oidc token in the request authorization header and the scheduler callback we are grabbing that token if it was null we are sending the 401 error message and also if the verification fields and the token was not verified it means it's some incorrect token so in that case we are also ending the function by simply returning and sending the response of 401 unauthorized token so that's it for this and now control s to also save this file and let's go for deploying the functions and testing them so go to your index.ts and control s in here open up your terminal clear the terminal and let's go for firebase deploy only functions first we will go for schedule post ttl and then we will go for scheduler callback and then go for testing so we have to wait some time for that after it's done we will go for testing and send the request on our post request to check if our post request is secured or not so our schedule post detail function is successfully deployed now let's go for deploying the scheduler callback also so simply remove the name of the schedule post detail by pressing the up arrow button and let's go for scheduler callback so that is the final function after it has been deployed we will go for the final testing of the application to check how our http post request is secured now so after the functions has been deployed let's go for the log step to check how is it going so in the scheduler callback log step we got two messages it means our function is successfully deployed and also for the schedule post TTL the same is going on in here the two log messages it means it's also successfully deployed so now let's go for our application and let's create one post schedule it and let's send the request on it to see what is going to happen so let's create a post and say schedule post and let's go for uploading it here we have got it schedule post and let's go to the schedule post detail queue refresh the queue and let's get the id from the task for sending the request so open up your postman again and click the search bar paste your id in here and send the same request now this time send the request and we got unauthorized token we are unable to send request in here that is because we have now secured our http post request so no one outside even ourselves if we don't have the authorization token we cannot send the request to delete the post from our cloud first or database but only our application has the right to generate the token include it in the authorization headers of the http post request and later we are accessing it in the scheduler callback it will verify the token and allow for further processing and delete the post from our cloud file store database so you can see i have passed the id in here and we get the unauthorized token response that we don't have any 
token in the authorization headers and it's empty so we are not allowed to send the request in here and we also if we pause let's say beer and let's say this and send the request it will again say unauthorized token because the token is again unauthorized and it is not the generated token so it will again say the unauthorized token so now if we go and check our application the post is deleted from here that is because we are scheduling the post in future two minutes so our application has the right to delete it whenever the time is arrived so you have seen the token was generated whenever it's time for dispatch and the scheduler callback has verified the token and the post was deleted from here only our application has the right to do it and it did it and when we were trying to delete it from outside we were getting an unauthorized token 401 error that we do not have the authorization token in the header so we are not allowed to send the request on this and delete the document from firestore database or anything in your case so that way we have successfully secured our http post request so only our application has the right to generate a token include it in the authorization header and map it in the scheduler callback and verify it and go for further processing and no one outside is allowed to delete the post from our cloud file store database and that's how we secured our http post request so let's go for the queue refresh the queue and there will be no queue because it's just page and our application has the right to do it and let's go for the logs in the scheduler callback we will also see some errors in here because we have sent the request on it here you can see we whenever we send the request we got the unauthorized token because that was us was sending the request so we don't had the token in the authorization headers so we were getting the unauthorized token two times and next time when the time is arrived when our application include the token in the authorization header so simply you can see here it logs in here the authorization header with the bearer and the token and then also printed the token a token verified the function execution started and the post was deleted from our cloud file store database and that request was from our application side so it's done and the post was deleted but in other case whenever we try to send the asd and asd bearer token you can see we got again the wrong number of segments unauthorized token and then the error so that way after seeing the logs it's confirmed that we have secured our http post request and no one outside is allowed to send the request on it and delete the post from our cloud file store database so along with this series you learn what are google cloud tasks how to set up them and how to utilize them to make our Firestore document TTL and also how to cancel the already scheduled task as well as taking care of our HTTP post request security. So that was all you need to know to implement it in your application without any headache. So now feel free to use Google Cloud tasks in your applications and there is no need to get mad on this because everything is secure and you don't need to worry about anything. So before ending the video, follow Itaquarel on LinkedIn and Instagram. You'll find the link in the video description where we upload informative content on daily basis. So I hope you have enjoyed the video. Like and subscribe to Itaquarel and are to get notified whenever the amazing videos are uploaded. So that was it and see you in the next video.